Creating and managing multiple warehouses is a big part of having a good inventory management system. Let's take a look at what options there are and activate for warehouses. When we talk about creating warehouses and activate, we need to produce a list of warehouses that are relevant to your business needs. There are many different types of warehouses that you may want to add to activate in order to manage your inventory properly. We'll be going over what physical, virtual, and third-party warehouses mean, along with giving you some examples of each. To start off, let's talk about physical warehouses. When you have multiple physical places that inventory is stored, such as a New York and a California warehouse, you may have more than one physical warehouse in the system. Other examples could be when you have a salesperson with inventory in their vehicle or at their home that they take to client sites. You'll want to be able to track exactly how much inventory they have at all times. A physical location can also mean you create a warehouse not only for the main part of your facility, but you also may create one for when you store products in different environments, such as cold storage. Or you could have a shipping container for storage on site at your warehouse. That container would be added as a warehouse in Activate so you always know what inventory is stored there. Each of these would be seen as a separate warehouse in the Activate system. Another way customers can manage inventory is by setting up virtual warehouses. Virtual locations may be those that segment your inventory into different categories, show ownership before receipt, or the status of the inventory itself. Some examples of virtual warehouses are finished good warehouses versus raw materials warehouses. In transit warehouses, when you order containers from overseas, but you need to show or ownership of the goods before delivery. Assigning your inventory to a quality assurance warehouse before it's released for sales. Or you may just need to quarantine your inventory to a specific time period before releasing it. And you can also use a returns warehouse that holds inventory until you have a time to review it for resale, return to your supplier, or adjustment from your inventory. Third-party warehouses are those that aren't necessarily owned by your company or managed by your company, but you still need to be able to view how much inventory is at that location. Third-party warehouses are those that aren't necessarily owned by your company or managed by your company, but you still need to be able to view how much inventory is at that location. Third-party fulfillment warehouses are a great example because even though the warehouse is doing your order fulfillment, you still need to be aware of the sale of goods so you can purchase more. Another example is inventory housed at a vendor's location. Whether you have purchased it or not, if you need the visibility to see what you have available at your supplier's facility, you'll set up a warehouse for that and activate. Or maybe you sell via Amazon FBA. You are responsible for sending restocks of your products to their facility. So adding an FBA warehouse to activate makes sense. Then there's also a consignment inventory, which is when your customer has ownership of the materials, but not physical management of them. Once you've got your list of warehouses you'd like to create and activate, you'll log into the system as an admin and open Configuration Manager. Then you'll go to the Inventory and Warehouse section, and now you'll be able to see a list of warehouses in your database. When adding a warehouse to your database, you can choose to add a new warehouse from scratch or you can copy an existing warehouse. If I'm needing to add a warehouse to activate for my cold storage freezer that's located physically within my main warehouse, I may copy that main warehouse to make a new one for the freezer. This is because most of the fields, like the physical address, is going to be the same for my original warehouse and the freezer warehouse. You'll then select the proper QuickBooks GL accounts for this warehouse. They may be the same as your original one or not. It would depend on your company's needs.
When I need to move product physically from one warehouse to another, I will create an inventory transfer in the system to record that change. I will also use inventory transfers to move inventory into my virtual locations as well. To create the transaction, you'll select from warehouse and the to warehouse, the product and the quantity. Other information may also be required based on your configuration in the system. Activate will also notify you when you need to restock a warehouse as well. I can quickly create a PO from the reorders window of Activate's business alerts. The alerts are specific to each warehouse and are based on minimum and maximum stocking quantities that are specific to each warehouse and product as well. Since each warehouse that you create and activate will have its own transactions to receive or sell inventory, we should reflect that costing separately as well, and we do. Being able to see cost differences in your products between warehouses is very helpful for making different kinds of business decisions. For companies with multiple physical locations, there are different costs associated with getting material to those locations, as well as transferring stock between them. The cost of goods sold for a particular item may change dramatically when it's been moved multiple times between locations. Thanks for watching our tutorial on Activate's multi warehouse capabilities. If you'd like to learn more or would like to set up a personalized demonstration, click on the Get Started button below. If you are already an Activate user, reach out to your Activate account rep or email sales at activate.com.